Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. I am very excited to begin a new mini-series on old topics. That is, conference papers that I gave some time ago. A long time ago. Why would you want something old? My first answer is, is that it is still timely today. In other words, the essentials have remained unchanged. My second is that it is free here on YouTube. To get similar content, you would have to buy a book or pay for a school. Perhaps a third reason is to see the furthest state of art in winding science, as well as presentation arts, some three decades ago. While the full title was a history of paper stresses during winding, the principles are identical for other materials. This was not a novel concept in 1986. The just formed Web Handling Research Center and an older one in the Netherlands, as well as the Kodak Company, had also been thinking along similar lines. What was new was two things. First, it was my very first conference paper. Second, it was the very first use of computer animation anywhere in our industry at a technical conference. For those of you who were of age back then, you will recall that nearly every computer was limited to green text on a green screen. The exception was gaming computers such as the Commodore Amiga, upon which this animation was written and rendered. It was not for another decade that ordinary computers would commonly multitask or multiprocess. It was not for another almost two decades that anyone else used moving pictures when PowerPoint first started to allow embedded video. In the next few minutes, we will follow the stress history of a segment of paper through the winding process from the unwind to the sheet run through the winding nip and into the roll, as well as its history during storage, shipping, and end use by your customer. We will show how paper stress can describe optimum winder operation, runability, and roll quality. In the past two decades, numerous methods have evolved to measure roll quality or structure. However, they have often been inadequate in describing the condition of a paper roll, much less the winding process itself. What we need is a meaningful parameter that gives us a unified and consistent description of winding. Historically, roll structuring has taken a baby bear approach. Winding should not be too hard, not too soft, but just right. Roll hardness, as measured by the billy club, though useful, is grade dependent and lacks quantitative definition. Tension is also very grade dependent. The breaking tension for board is 15 times the breaking tension of news. Stress is not very grade dependent. The breaking stress for board is only 1.8 times the breaking stress of newsprint. Stress can describe paper roll quality. If the compressive stresses are too low, the paper will crepe or buckle. If the shear stresses are too high, the paper will have diagonal wrinkles. If the tensile stresses are too high, the paper will break. These examples show how paper stress can describe the most common roll defects. Additionally, paper stress can also describe the winding process itself, as we will see when we follow a segment of paper from the unwind through the winder. Looking at a segment of paper on the unwind, the paper is under a state of stress that is equal to its wound-in stress as determined by how it was wound at the reel. As this segment of paper is unwound, it experiences a rapid change in tensile stress as it passes the unwinding tangent into the web run. This is the paper's first real opportunity to break down.
The average web stress is determined by web tension set point. The average web strength is determined by the paper making process. However, web stress and web strength are not constant with time. Stress varies due to out of round unwinds, and strength varies due to paper making process fluctuations. Web breaks occur whenever the web stress exceeds its strength. Reducing web breaks can be accomplished by increasing paper strength or decreasing web tension or by decreasing the variations in strength and tension. Alignment of winder rolls affects web stresses. Looking at the center roll, if it is misaligned in the plane of sheet, the web is steered sideways. This generates shear stresses which tend to induce wrinkling on the upstream draw. The downstream draw may have somewhat less shear stress wrinkling. Bowed spreader rolls use shear stresses to shift the web sideways to induce slit separation. However, one must be careful because too much bow may cause diagonal wrinkling due to excessive shear stresses. Out of plane misalignment of rolls also affects web stresses. Looking at the center roll as it is raised out of the plane of the web, the stress is increased on the front side and decreased on the back side. Recall that the average stress remains unchanged as it is determined by the tension set point. Web stress is equal to web tension divided by caliper. Out of plane misalignment can be beneficial if it is used on a guide roll to accommodate non uniform paper. Guide roll misalignment may improve the runnability of the winder, but will not improve the quality of the paper roll. Uniform paper rolls result only from uniform paper. As the segment of paper travels along the web to the rewound roll, it must pass through one or more nips. The contact stresses produced by a paper roll nipped against a steel roll are a severe and complicated environment that defies precise definition. Contact stresses are important by generating a higher wound in tension than would be achieved strictly from web tension alone. This is useful in creating a hard start. However, nip stresses can also contribute to roll defects such as wrinkling. As the paper is wound into a roll, it sees a new set of stresses which define its roll structure. The first of which are the radial stresses which act in the Z direction of the paper. The radial stresses represent the pressure between adjacent layers in the roll. Plotting the radial stresses shown on the vertical axis against position in the roll shown on the horizontal axis, we can see this interlayer pressure inside a paper roll as it is wound at an optimum constant tension. As the roll is winding, we can see that the radial compressive stress is nearly constant throughout the bulk of the roll, except at the outer surface where it is zero and in the core vicinity. There is a sharp pressure gradient near the core which is very dependent on the stiffness of the core and the quality of the winding start. This is an area where many roll defects are found. High radial stresses and paper friction are beneficial because they increase the resistance of the roll to paper to paper slippage during winding and telescoping during unwinding. Many ropes and corrugations are generated due to non-uniform paper slippage across the face. Another set of stresses which define roll structure are the tangential stresses, which act in the machine direction of the paper. Tangential stresses may be tensile, zero, or compressive. Though a single strip of paper cannot be put into compression without buckling, Paper inside a roll can be stable in MD compression if there is sufficient support from adjacent layers. Plotting the tangential stresses shown on the vertical axis against position in the roll shown on the horizontal axis, we can see the machine direction stress inside a paper roll as it is wound at an optimum constant tension. 
Again, there is a sharp stress gradient near the core. The tangential stresses at the outside of the roll are equal to the stress at which it was wound. However, through the bulk of the roll, the tangential stress is nearly constant and has a compressive value equal to the radial stresses. This compressive region is where defects such as starring and creping are likely to occur. Tangential stresses are important. The high tensile tangential stress at the outside of the roll is what determines the maximum paper roll size that can be wound without bursts. Though these last two models show the result of uniform winding, we could also have used them to describe the deleterious effects of non-uniform winding. We would like to have a high radial pressure to reduce paper slippage and an optimum tangential stress to reduce starring and bursts. Unfortunately, the physics of a roll will not allow us to choose these two stresses independently. A compromise must be made. Another set of stresses are the centrifugal stresses due to the rotation of the paper roll. High-speed rotation causes both radial and tangential stresses to be superimposed upon the roll-structured stresses. Plotting both the radial and tangential stresses shown on the vertical axis against position in the roll shown on the horizontal axis, we can see how rotation affects stresses inside a roll during winding. The top curve is the tangential stresses, and the bottom curve is the radial stresses. To the right is a speed bar to show the typical acceleration, run, and deceleration cycle of the winder. Centrifugal stresses are somewhat smaller than the roll structure induced stresses. However, they are not negligible. At high speeds, the roll structure induced compressive radial pressure is reduced by the centrifugal stresses. What this means is that there is an upper limit to the speed of a winder beyond which the paper roll will have no interlayer radial pressure and it will lose its structure entirely. As the winder slows down to a stop, the centrifugal stresses are reduced to zero. The net effect of centrifugal stresses is the tendency to decrease tension during run and increase tension after the winder is stopped. Perhaps a more important limitation of winder speed is the entrainment of air, which at high speeds also reduces radial pressure. Air entrained into a roll acts as a lubricant, increasing the tendency of paper slippage. After the roll is wound, the paper stresses will change slowly with time. This may result from creep or stress relaxation. If we hang a weight from a paper specimen, Wait a while, and remove the weight. The paper will have permanently deformed to a shape between its original shape and its loaded shape. This is known as creep. Creep is not harmful in itself. However, if the paper or winding conditions are not uniform across the width, the end user may find a web with puckers and bags due to non-uniform creep. Another mechanism for changing stresses and strains in a roll of paper after it is wound is due to changing moisture, also known as hygroscopic diffusion. In this computer simulation, we will see the drying of a paper roll. 200 days of drying will be shown in two minutes on the cross section of the roll. To the right is a moisture scale with blue representing wet and black representing dry. Paper is a hydrophilic material, which means it has an affinity for absorbing water. Additionally, paper has a large coefficient of hygroscopic expansion. For these reasons, small changes in the moisture content of paper will result in large changes in stresses and or strains. 
Paper taken from the paper machine reel has a moisture level which is not necessarily in equilibrium with its environment. Dry paper will take on and wet paper will give up moisture until it reaches hygroscopic equilibrium. This equilibrium moisture content level varies with paper grade and environmental relative humidity. As can be seen from this simulation, the roll dries inward from its exposed surfaces, which include the face, the outer surface, and the core. This rate of drying slows with time as the driving force, which is the moisture difference between the surface and the interior points, is decreased. The details of paper roll drying are affected by the type of wrapping, whether it be plastic film or craft paper, the header, the core, whether it be fiber or steel, and the way it is stacked in the warehouse. Because paper is so sensitive to environmental moisture, care must be taken to dry the paper uniformly on the paper machine to a level that is in equilibrium with its subsequent environments. Additionally, wrapping, stacking, and warehousing must minimize non-uniform drying or wetting. Both wetting and drying cause considerable disruption in the paper roll structure. In the next simulation, we will see how the drying of a roll of paper affects its shape and its stresses. Looking at the same roll cross-section, we see it change shape as it contracts non-uniformly during drying. The intermediate shape for a drying roll is barrel-shaped, which will cause the roll to have a baggy center when unwound. The intermediate shape for a wetting roll is hourglass shaped, which will cause the roll to have baggy edges when unwound. The effect of non-uniform moisture is equally profound on roll stresses. Drying the outer layers of a roll by 1% moisture will increase the tangential stresses by 225 pounds per square inch and add 14 tons of radial squeeze over the surface of a typical roll. Though we have covered a lot of material in the last 15 minutes, the concept I would like you to go home with is this. Paper stress, as opposed to hardness or tension, is a fundamental roll structuring parameter that gives us a unified, consistent, and quantitative description of winding. We can improve the winder process by reducing roll defects resulting from poor paper stress profiles. Conversely, we can determine the limitations of winding that result from the inviolate laws of physics of the process. Paper stress can give us a new insight into winding. To close, I would like to offer a couple of more current and more nuanced ideas of web and winding mechanics. The first is that my appreciation of web stresses at that time was beyond the intuitive and well into the primitive. Please see my Mechanics of Roller book that came a decade later for a much more complete and useful application. The second is that stresses and strains are the opposite sides of the same coin. While stresses are easier, strains or movements are more descriptive for many, or perhaps even most, roll defects. Perhaps the next generation of researchers will advance mechanics in that direction. Thank you so very much for watching this module in my Plant Practical video series. Stay tuned for the next clip where we describe web machine vibration in a way that had not been described in the literature ever before or ever since. See you next time.